So there are several things I think are, are uh, advisable. The first one, of course, is continuing to turn out trained candidates in science, technology, engineering, and, and mathematics, and so on. Be really skilled people. Not all of them will go into IT jobs necessarily, but an awful lot of that is needed in order to create the infrastructure that supports IT and its developments. We need programmers. We need people that know how to take platforms like the mobiles and add new applications to them. So that's point number one. The second thing is thinking about business models and recognizing that the domestic IT economy has its limits, despite you know, enthusiastic uptake and everything else. So whatever you're going to do, if you're going to design new businesses, you need to think about them exporting services and products and so on to other economies besides your own. You finally have a big one right next to you in, in the sense of the European continent, but everyone else in the world is gaining uh, in terms of use. You know that in China there are 500 million people online on the internet today. And the government, in spite of all this, the things you hear about censorship and other things, they are still investing enormously in bringing the internet up and making it available and useful. So you don't want to lose an opportunity to try to get access to that. Third thing is to make sure that you continue to adopt practices that will bring in interest in multinational companies, hiring people here and using them. But the thing that's even more important to me personally is to see the, um, per the, the personal wealth of the country to go up, the GDP per capita uh, and personal wealth. And the only way we can do that is for people here to be able to easily start companies to, and to grow them. And there are all kinds of things that can get in the way of that, whether it's very, very difficult to incorporate or whether in, in some cases in other parts of Europe, I don't know here, if you have a failure, a bankrupt company, the CEO is personally liable. And you can see how that might lead to very, very timid kinds of attempts to grow, not taking any chances at all because of the personal liability. So having limited liability arrangements is important. I think that's probably true here as it is in England, for example. But in Sweden, it's not the case. So uh, that, uh, those are important ingredients. Another part is availability of capital, obviously. And the, the next one is a stock market, a vibrant stock market, a very fluid one, which will allow for IPOs. So all of those ingredients, I think, have to be there. It's like an engine you know, missing a gear if you don't have all the pieces, and I'm sure I've left out some. I also want to point out that it's not just science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You need people who know how to run a business. They have to understand finance. They have to understand marketing. They have to understand sales. They have to understand products. And so you really need a fairly substantial uh, educational resource in order to have successful businesses in this space. So J Jimmy Wells had asserted in the Internet Society's 20th anniversary keynote speech that the death of Hollywood would, would happen and nobody would notice. Um, and, and he didn't mean that there wouldn't be any more entertainment. He just meant it would be produced a different way. So this is an important issue. On the journalism side especially, I mean, considering uh, that I'm talking to you, John, uh, I believe that good quality journalism is vital to uh, successful democracies. It's absolutely essential. And we all have seen the erosion of the business model of the newspaper, binding those two things together. Historically, newsprint was the cheapest way of distributing large quantities of the same information to a large number of people uh, in some more or less permanent form, unlike radio and television, which also are mass media, but they're ephemeral. Uh, the problem is that the online environment has a different set of economics than paper does. It's cheaper, it's faster, you don't have to deliver it, it doesn't turn yellow, et cetera, et cetera. So now the problem is that because the economics of newspapers were so compelling when they were first uh, produced, because you had all those eyeballs reading news and they saw advertisements and that, that produced a revenue stream in addition to subscriptions, What's happened in the online world, as we've seen at Google, is that first you don't have to send the same advertise, send the same advertisement to everyone. You can uh, personalize that. Second, the cost and, and rapidity with which you can propagate data is very high. You don't have to wait for an addition to come out. So now with the conundrum that you imply is that the business models for newspapers today are not producing the revenue per reporter, so to speak, that they once were. And that harms the quality of the product. The question is, is there an online model that will produce the same kind of revenue per reporter? And I honestly do not know the answer to this question, but I believe we must find an answer. 
because it's in, too important to our society. And it, it, you cannot, in my view, depend solely on blogs and tweets and other things. They're important because they sometimes give you pieces of information instantaneously that you wouldn't normally get. How many times have you seen a television show or even a newspaper report based on information coming from a source which happened to be available, had his mobile, took a video and what have you. I mean, this is the good part of all this is that everybody in theory can become a source. I carefully did not say reporter because I wanted to save that word for the journalist who actually does quality work. So I'm still in a, in a quandary, just as uh, you and, and your colleagues must be, but we must find a solution to this. We have to find business models that will actually work. Ace, remember, I'm just an engineer, but I have this feeling that once we are online and we deliver information through that means, that we may be able to make the information that we deliver more actionable with, uh, to be cliche, you know, with the push of a button, than we could in the past. Now, that's a tiny glimmer of an idea, but what it says is that the, uh, the analysis that a dr journalist is doing could extend now beyond the explanation to actions. Now, that's a rather interesting extension of what we do with news. It's what should I do about it in addition to what should I know about it. Now, maybe there's a tiny little opportunity to create value out of that path, and that means a different business model or an additional business model to support the enterprise. Some people imagine, you know, that I'm pounding my chest saying, I did that. I know that this is, first of all, it's infrastructure, and second, it wouldn't have happened without millions of people wanting it to happen. So this is one of those lucky moments when your idea is adopted by a lot of other people. Um, if you think about this as kind of a road system, about all we really did was to figure out how to make the roads, and we suggested some rules of the road, like, you know, don't drive on both sides at the same time because you run into each other. Please don't make the cars any longer than this or wider than that or taller than this or heavier than that because the road system won't hold it. But we didn't say anything about what kind of automobiles or vehicles you could do. We had said nothing about what was inside of them. We said nothing about what businesses or buildings or something were at the sides of the roads. That was all open. So in a sense, we simply created an enabling capability. Now, I happen to resonate with this notion of enabling because what it invites is somebody else figuring out what to do. And when Tim Berners-Lee did the World Wide Web, it wasn't the content that he invented. He invented this enabling capability to make content compatible and more easily accessible. And he was doing it for his physics friends. And of course, it turned into something in addition to that. So these are all layers of capability and enabling, and it's the creativity of the, of the general population which I find completely and totally amazing. Uh, and it's very satisfying, actually, to know that you can do something as simple as that and then trigger this consequence. I have no idea how this is all going to end up, and I almost don't care, you know, I don't worry about that. I just sort of sit back and enjoy the, the show. <laughs>